Hey everyone, I'm Kevin Cruz. Welcome back to another episode of Culture Code. Our guest today is the Vice President of Talent and Learning of Health Edge, Wendy Ellis. Wendy, welcome. And let's start uh, by telling everyone, where are you joining us from today? Well, um, it's great to be here. Um, happy Friday. I am actually in Knoxville, Tennessee today. Um, uh, yeah, UT Knoxville starts school next week, so moving my um, daughter into college, um, but I'm typically right outside of Nashville in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, working awesome. from home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And congratulations on the uh, this uh, exciting time for you and your you and your daughter. Now, tell us about Health Edge for com- for people who haven't heard of the company. How big is the organization? What do you guys do in in plain language? Yes. Okay. I think I can do that, even though <laughs> it's a, a tech company. Uh, so we have about um, a little over 1,600 employees. And if you think about when you go to the doctor and they have to process a claim, um, we have software technology that makes that happen behind the scenes uh, with payment integrity. Um, and then we also have solutions um, that help enable positive patient outcomes. So that's the the best way that that, that I can put that and, and make it under you understand it in layman's terms. Yeah, it's that's a lot great. More complicated than that, but oh, I'm sure it is. But anything that's helping to enable positive patient outcomes, I'm I'm behind it. So when we talk about, uh, you know, I love talking about engagement, culture, leadership, and mm-hmm. company culture. Um, it, it's even just what is culture. People will debate what that is. But describing culture can be tough. You know, often you kind of see and recognize great culture, but it's sort of hard to put into words. But I'm going to ask you to try. Like, how would you describe your company's culture? Yeah, that is a that is a tough question. And I always try to look at it from the lens of the employee and how we describe what it's like to work here. And I really think that we are a, a culture of continuous learning. Um, there is uh, support at the leadership level for continuous learning. Um, there's also, how do we get better, um, uh, continuous improvement? Um, do we, uh, we provide the tools, the attitude, the environment for us to do things better? And I can give you some examples of how we're doing that in learning. Um, I think we also have an environment where people feel heard. Um, they're respected. Um, our engagement scores show that. And, um, we are a tech savvy company and we are always looking for ways to make things better for our customers, which then impact um, their customers. That's great. Now, great culture doesn't happen by accident, of course. And so, I mean, you already mentioned sort of like support from the, from the top, from senior leadership, but what are some ways that you, you help to build and maintain this kind of culture? Part of it is uh, setting examples and uh, w- from our leadership on what we expect from a behavior perspective, but also um, designing our how we measure performance in uh, a way that sets behavioral expectations. And so that is, um, and you know, our our CEO Steve Krupa is a continuous learner. He is super supportive of of recommending books, uh, supportive of any of the programs that we want to roll out. And so, and our entire leadership team is, and I think that because they're setting that example at the top, it trickles down in the organization. And um, I've never worked for an organization where we have the level of uh, respect and um, that your voice can be heard the way that it is here. I mean, engagement surveys, taking quick actions from the engagement surveys, like it has just been so refreshing to be a part of this the last almost two years. Yeah, that's amazing. And of course, the fastest way to disengage someone is, is ask them to take a survey and then it goes into a black hole and they are like, well, I just wasted my time or I told them exactly. how to make it better and they're not listening to me you know, or something like that. So the fact that mm-hmm. there's uh, action and it's so rare, um, so many folks that I interview, heads of leadership development, et cetera are always saying one of their biggest challenges is not getting any support or alignment from above. It seems to be more common than not. So it sounds like uh, Steve is a unique uh, C-level leader who actually loves to be a lifelong learner himself. He really does. He, it, it, I know when I tell other um, peers in, in, in other industries, but in similar roles, they're like, Wendy, you have it so lucky. And I do not take that for granted at all. Great. Now, I, um, from LeadX Research, Gallup Research, we know that about 70% of the variance in employee engagement 
is tied back to who your manager is. So it's great if you have a great CEO. It's great if the mission, vision, values are inspiring. But boy, if you have a bad boss, that's the filter that everything comes through. Join a company, leave a boss is the old saying. And so to maintain your culture, you obviously have to be investing in frontline leaders, frontline managers. What are you doing to develop them? That's a great question and something I'm super passionate about. Um, I have my own management, um, you know, philosophy around, like, I take it to heart. Like, I'm literally impacting somebody's life every single day. And now that we're in this remote hybrid environment, you're impacting their home environment as well. And so being a manager is a responsibility and a privilege. And so here at Health Edge, we've done quite a bit. We've called 2022 the year of the manager. Um, we've done a lot to create this environment of, of uh, continuous feedback, meaning giving managers the tools and the framework that they need to be able to give feedback. Um, because we found out that that wasn't happening a lot and we had an overinflation of ratings. So we started by education, meaning here uh, is a baseline of what we expect you to do as a manager in terms of feedback. Feedback, especially when it's more constructive in nature, can be very difficult to give. And also some managers shy away from that because of um, the great resignation. Well, if I give them this tough feedback, they might leave. And I'd rather have someone in that seat that's doing okay than have to go recruit someone else and get them trained up and everything. So we started by um, making uh, feedback a conversation versus a conflict mm. and giving them uh, tools to be able to uh, give more transparent feedback. And <clears throat> what we saw in terms of uh, from the performance management cycle is uh, a 15% decrease in exceeds expectations uh, ratings and more realistic ratings. We also saw a decrease in the self-evaluation and the manager evaluation, meaning they started to align their thinking more. So we're like, okay, we know that there's more conversations happening. We also uh, decided our mid-year performance reviews were mid-year check-ins, meaning how are you doing? What, what areas are going really well? What areas do you need to focus on the remainder of the year? And then we required 100% of our employees to put in a development goal for 2023. Mm -hmm. So that conversation mid-year is not tied to a rating. It's really tied to how are you doing? How are you progressing towards your development goal? Um, and having that conversation be less threatening and more productive and more um, empowering in nature for our employees. And we've gotten a ton of feedback, positive feedback. One of the things that we do post every initiative that we launch is we do focus groups, what went well, what didn't go well, what would you like to see change next time? And so that whole continuous improvement mindset is something that we've built into everything that we do. Wendy, you covered so many different initiatives, so much gold in there. Um, just for our listeners, I want to kind of underscore a, a couple of things. You, you talk about the mid-year check-in and this is so important um, in our le leadership uh, IQ, uh, LQ model that we have. It's one of the top 10 drivers of engagement is, are you having career conversations you know, with, with your manager? And ideally, twice a year. You know, We like to call them stay interviews, right? <laughs> Exit interviews, it's too late. The horse left the barn. Um, mm -hmm. But just to your point, because annual performance reviews, they're usually ridiculous for a lot of reasons. But if they're tied to ratings, if they're tied to compensation, that's a different kind of conversation. So to have what you said, you know, a mid-year check-in that's not about ratings, you know, it's about it's about the future. You know, where do you want to go? Can you get there here? What what kind of developmental activities? That is a super powerful, super engaging conversation. The other thing that I love is <laughs> I would have been uh, at home as one of your managers um, uh, years ago because. I, I withheld feedback. Um, my personality type in, in the big five model, I'm highly agreeable, which means I want to get along with everyone, harmonious relationships. The downside of that is I withhold feedback. You know, I don't want to hurt people's feelings. I don't want to cause a fight. And the reality is, you know, people at work, they don't need another friend. They need, they need a coach, someone who's going to make them better, help them to get to the next layer of your career. So for probably two decades, I was like, oh, I don't want to make them feel bad. I was being selfish. I didn't want me to feel bad. They want to get constructive mm -hmm. feedback. 
And so just brilliant on those uh, on those special uh, initiatives. Now, I'm going to jump because you've hit so many things here, but is there any particular initiative that you're most proud of or got really cool results on that we haven't uh, talked about already? Well, um, I, I think I am most proud of um, how we took the performance management process um, and made it more impactful than it was before because we all know no one want, wants to write a book uh, and go in and put in information, just write a book. And no one has uh, discovered the perfect performance management process. They have it. No one. I mean, um, we all try and, um, you know, want to make this improvement. And so I am really proud of that mid-year check-in concept. Um, we, this is our second year that we've done this. So we refreshed our competencies um, over the, the, the um, uh, latter part of Q1. And so we had to do training on individual and manager competencies. And so uh, mid-year, we had to say, okay, review these competencies, make sure you understand them. And so we did a refresh there and describing behaviors that we expect in those competencies for mm -hmm. both individual contributors and our people leaders. But I, I think that you know, we're a small company. We have to be scrappy. We don't have a ton of money uh, to get all these beautiful systems uh, to do all these things that we'd love to have. But these steps forward in terms of having a development goal and having that check-in conversation, I believe is going to feed into our manager effectiveness scores going up because now in our engagement survey, survey this past spring, we do have manager effectiveness tile. And so we are looking at those scores um, and we're doing a, another um, a engagement survey in the beginning of October. So we'll be able to measure how is this doing uh, with our managers? How are they taking what they're learning and um, applying that in their day to day? We know they're busy, but I believe that the tools and these programs and initiatives we're putting out are making them better every single day. So Wendy, will you be moving to um more frequent than an annual engagement survey. It sounds like maybe twice a year. Is that right? It's twice. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It and is. I think and this we'll, is a, yeah. this is an important topic because, well, look, once a year is better than never. So that's good for companies that are doing an annual engagement survey, but especially when it comes to the manager behavior questions, the manager effectiveness, mm -hmm. it can take up to 12 weeks to change a behavior, but waiting 12 months before you see if they've improved is a long time, especially that so much can happen. Someone who's disengaged with their boss will find a new job within 90 days in, in, in this environment. And so really to be able to measure at least, you know, every three to six months, give people that feedback, give them a chance to change and improve and then measure and, and check their progress. So that's fantastic. I, you know, this is a short format podcast. We kind of, we kind of move move quickly uh, and we have a few minutes left, but I'm curious, you know, imagine you could sort of get every team member, every colleague to read a book, you know, like the same book. Do you have a book that comes to mind, a favorite book? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. It's a tough There's, one. I am, you, you, I've, I'm stuck there. Threw there you a curveball. I know. You I did know. throw me a curveball. Um, well, I'm right in the middle of reading your latest book about setting goals and I am blown away. I'm almost done. Um, so this isn't uh, even a setup. You just want to get extra good treatment in this uh, Forbes article or something. <laughs> maybe so. Um, but thinking about like just reading, like thinking about if I had started sooner. Oh, yeah. Yeah would my life be different than it yeah. is now? And even thinking about like what's left in my career and where I want to go and that whole concept around, um, you know, just starting small and then getting as big, don't limit yourself. Right. It's been, it's been fantastic to read. Yeah. So again, for listeners, Wendy's being uh, very generous with her, her comments about my new book, 11 secrets successful people know about uh, goal setting. And um, you haven't uh, gotten to the surprise chapter at the end, but you know, most of the book is about, it's not smart goals, but like what real research and psychologists say is the right way to set goals, but with a twist at the end, because goals can limit focus. Um, but I agree. That was one of the lessons of the book is that uh, most people just set their goals way too small, right? Like if we just start and dream big, like it's, there's some, there's some power in that. What about um, if you think about what's going on in your organization now, 
and you could wave a magic wand and all of a sudden all your colleagues were a little better at fill in the blank, a certain skill, a certain behavior. Like what might that be? What skill or behavior would you want them to develop even more? Uh, creating connection in the ro remote environment. Mm. It, I know um, I have a team of nine people now and um, it takes a lot of work from all of us to stay connected every day, um, whether that be through, you know, meetings or Teams messages or, you know, just words of encouragement. And we managers sometimes get busy in their own day-to-day -day work and they forget that there are people out there that need and crave that connection and that engagement from them. So if I could wave a magic wand, I would give every single people leader the skill set, the energy, um, and the wherewithal to be able to like do that really, really well. Love it. Last question. So what is exciting you uh, the most about Health Edge right now? It is the fact that we are building all of these programs for our employees that we can quickly shift if we need to um, based on feedback that we're getting and that we have so much support for what we want to do, what we've been able to do so far. I just have to, how can we scale? That's my biggest challenge right now so that we can, um, you know, impact more people within the organization. But it's super exciting to be a part of watching all of this stuff be uh, growing and developing within the organization. That's great. Wendy, congratulations on all the success, all the impact your company's having. And um, thanks for spending time on this Friday when you just dropped a, a daughter off at college. Um, you you dropped some bombs of wisdom that are going to help your, your peers. So thanks for that. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Kevin.